Well, when you think of hypnosis, do you think of this? Look into my eyes, look into my eyes, the eyes, the eyes, look around the eyes, don't look around the eyes, look into my eyes. You're under, I did not steal your red dress, take it home and then wear it while doing the hoovering. Three, two, one. <laughs> back in the room. And you know, I can't find those stilettos, you know those ones from Shelley's? <laughs> look, I bought you those, I kind of think if I want to wear them, I'll wear them. <laughs> Worst of the time, right? <laughs> Jokes aside, the practice of hypnotherapy spans hundreds of years with advocates believing it can treat a variety of medical conditions. Hey, Carlos, I'm hypnotised already. Here to do some myth-busting for us is Dr Rahul Janiel live in LA. I'm hypnotised already. Oh, he has that effect on people. <laughs> Doctor, is there any science at all to hypnotherapy? There is, but only 10% of people can even undergo hypnosis. And for anxiety, for pain, for exposure therapy, if you're afraid of spiders, sometimes that can be treated through hypnosis. But it's not a lot of people, and it's self-reported. So if you feel better, you feel better. But mm. as far as, you know, as far as doing a brain scan or, you know, an experiment like we did for a COVID vaccine, it's not that kind of science. It's self-reporting and it's observational. Well, how does it actually work, Doc? And how, like, could I do it to Carl, for example? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what you would say or do to Carl oh, there are under things. hypnosis. There, <laughs> oh, the, uh, the science is like, it's like light sleep. There's this concept. I don't know if there's any proof of it, but the, the, what they're purporting is that in light sleep, you're relaxed and not anxious, yet you're still open to suggestion. Mm. Mm. And it's a little bit like sleepwalking where you're doing reflexive things um, and it looks like you're up and about, but actually your mind is in sort of this border state between consciousness and falling asleep. Uh, Doc, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've had a few friends who have gone through it mm -hmm. um, to curb addictions like smoking, and they've mm -hmm. had pretty good success at it. When yeah. you say 10%, how do you know if you're one of those people? Mm. Uh, is, there, is there, even though it's not exact, is there a way of analysing it a little? Um, I don't have a firm answer for that question, but when, you, when I was reviewing uh, for this segment, it said there was... 10% uh, that were highly hypnotizable. So how they came to that conclusion, I'm not exactly sure because mm. there isn't a metric. Again, if the patient is interactive, if the client says they felt something profound, then I think they would agree to that. But there isn't a blood test or a thermometer or anything like that. Yeah, it's interesting the amount of conditions it could heal as well, potentially. Mind-related anxiety, pain. Mm. And again, we talked about phobias and... Um, yeah. So the list is endless. <laughs> Sounds looks like I've got him. <laughs> I think it's working. Carlos. I think you've mesmerized me. <laughs> We've left our doctor. Sound is helping. I might be in that ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's eyes you. have done the trick. <laughs> I love you, Doc. Oh See you soon. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?